Happy October, everyone. Welcome back to Come Again TV, where in the month of October, all horror culture collides. <laughs> Today, we're going to be taking a look at yet another story from the Halloween 30 Years of Terror comic book entitled Repetition Compulsion, which was written by Stephen Hutchinson, drawn by Tim Seeley, and colored by Elizabeth John. Once again, this story is from the Devil's Due Publishing comic book, Halloween 30 Years of Terror, so stay tuned. <laughs> Monday, October 30th, 1989, Haddonfield Elementary School. A young teacher is preparing her class for the holiday tomorrow. With the events that have unfolded in previous years, many of the children are scared. Scared of the boogeyman. Now I know you're scared about tomorrow, but I'm going to teach you all something that will help keep the ghosts and goblins away. It's a special secret, so make sure you remember. It's a secret that only takes up one little word. If you're sad and scared, all you have to do to chase your fears away is smile. If you beam brightly, then nothing can hurt you. I'll see you tomorrow, and I don't want to hear any more stories of bad dreams. The children rush out of their classroom to leave school for the day. None of them notice a figure standing in the back of the hall, watching and waiting. We join Dr. Sam Loomis, who's alone in his study, alone with his obsession. Everything he knows about, everything he has on his patient, a patient with the blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. His patient has become his obsession. Even long after his career has ended, his obsession has remained. He sits there alone waiting, knowing that within the next day or so, blood will be spilled. Innocent blood. It's then that Nurse Chambers walks through the door. She was with him on that fateful night so many years ago. The night that Michael escaped from Smith's Grove. In the years that followed, she became Dr. Loomis's partner, trying to help him close Bandora's box once and for all. They lived in this house together, 4946 Cypress Pond Road, Langdon, Illinois. Not as lovers, but as colleagues and friends, desperate in their pursuit to stop Michael once and for all. Sam hadn't moved hardly at all since Marion left him the night before. Dr. Loomis kept Michael's mask on a filing cabinet next to his desk. It had been facing the desk, but somehow it was turned facing the door, staring at Marion as she entered the room. Does that thing have to stare back at me when I come in here? Why? I didn't even notice. That's not good. Because it was facing the desk. I hope you're mistaken, Sam. Because that would mean that he's been here. It's not looking at you either. It's looking at the map. Marion tells Sam she thinks they should call the police. Sam knows they wouldn't take him seriously. They never do. Until it's too late. Dr. Loomis notices that Michael has added an extra pin to the map on the wall. The map is marked with each location of the Halloween murders. This time, it's been pinned at the elementary school. We return to the school, to the classroom we began in. The young teacher is sitting alone grading papers. She doesn't notice the figure steps silently into the room behind her, back with Loomis and Chambers. Sam, are you all right? You look, I feel sick. Maybe your body is trying to tell you something. There comes a point when you have to give up the ghosts, and maybe... This isn't a ghost! Ghost or not, look at what it's doing to you. One day remind me why I waste my breath. You won't listen until it's too late. Dr. Loomis's scarred face from the hospital explosion, facing the setting sun, with his gun already in hand. The two pull up to the school and begin to walk the grounds. It's already too late. I have a responsibility that I cannot avoid. As the two patrol... Michael stands holding the teacher, keeping her mouth muffled as they pass, as to not lure them to their direction. Do you really think he's here? I don't know. Until he sees fit 
To explain the rules, all we could do is play along. A short time later, Loomis stumbles upon a dog laying on the playground in a puddle of blood with a hand-drawn picture of Sam pinned to it. It's still alive. Michael didn't even kill it. Sam takes the wounded animal away as Michael silently slaughters the young teacher. Tears running down her face, Michael's hand covering her mouth. She couldn't even scream, her blood spattering across the chalkboard, where she had written the word smile just a short time before, in front of a classroom full of students. He killed her! On Tuesday, October 31st, Halloween. Dr. Loomis is awakened by the sound of the news on the radio. Michael's been here again. It's never enough for him. Loomis's eyes open even wider with dread as a victim was found at Haddonfield Elementary School. Sam looks on in fear as more pins have been placed on his map. Dozens of pins. Pointing to every place he plans to begin this year's trick-or-treating. On the other side of town, at the elementary school, children and staff alike arrive to the school to find the teacher, who just the day before had told the children to smile, hanging dead from the swing set. Her eyes frozen open, with blood-red tears streaming down her face, and barbed wire pulling her mouth into a permanent grin. It's never enough, Michael, is it? Damn you, Michael! Damn you to hell! That was my favorite of the stories in this comic, guys. I really wish the studio could have turned both that and Trick or Treat into parts of the movies. This comic is part of the H2O timeline, and they stuck with the whole story of having Dr. Loomis and Marion Chambers living together that was part of the opening scenes of H2O, which was very nice. The only problem I could see with it, though, was that Michael doesn't really like to play with Dr. Loomis, like he did in this story. There's usually no forewarning about the murders he commits. It's usually just Michael as an unstoppable force against Loomis, the immovable object. Other than that, it was great storytelling and did feel very much like it could have been part of the film. So with that being said, guys, I think this is going to be the last story we take a look at from the Halloween 30 Years of Terror. You'll just have to try and pick up a copy to get the other two or three. I can't remember how many there were. I think there were two. Could be wrong. But like I said, these last two were my favorites. They were the ones that actually felt like part of a Halloween movie. So until next time, guys, when we take a look at Chaos Comics, Halloween number one from November of 2000. This is going to be a part of a trilogy, so tune in. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to receive notifications on all our upcoming videos. Hit the like button, make sure and leave us a comment so we know how you felt about this video. And don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, I'm Shannon for Comic Again, where all geek culture collides.